credible elections, our development gender on agenda, the rule of law. If we are discussing politics in Nigeria, there's no way we can do that without talking about money. Money that funds politics and money that drives politics. And if money drives politics, that means the control and regulation of how money and other resources, including state administrative resources are used, is central for the determination of whether an election is free, fair, and credible. So, impliedly, we must take issues around finances of political parties and campaign expenditure very, very seriously. Then we've been talking about development of the country. We are challenged fiscally. We have economic crisis, we are the poverty capital of the world. And how is this related to campaign or political finance? It is about the quantum of resources we put into elections in an environment where resources are very scarce and government is borrowing by the day. I would tell you to go back in the last two election cycles because what Nigerians are quite conversant with is the issue of the budget. You know how much money we spend or how much money we borrow. We can easily get to see that. But not so many Nigerians are conversant with how we even manage our monetary policy in terms of the ways and means, the money we borrow from the central bank to fund programs and activities. And I dare you to go back to see that in each election year, the ways and means we take from the central bank is much more than what we do in a normal year. Like today, beyond our normal debt, which is about $85.9 billion, we have another 11 point something trillion on ways and means. And go and look at the years where this borrowing from the central bank spikes. So, if we are serious about reforming our economy, there is no way we can neglect campaign or political finance. Moving further down, there's a lot of discussion going around globally about putting gender on the agenda of everything we do. Already we know that the economic resources of the patriarchal society is so distributed in a way that women have not been opportuned to get their base share and due of political representation. And if we must take political representation by women, getting them to be real participants, not participants as voting for us, but participants as also standing for elections and standing a chance of opportunity of being elected, then we must reform campaign finance. Because there's no way we can do that without necessarily asking questions about what are the current limitations and how are those limitations enforced. I do it like write letters from parchment. Everybody knows what is there, but nobody wants to talk about it. Or are there things that we take so seriously that even people caught with bullion fans will actually be investigated and prosecuted, and not for us to pretend that the bullion fans never happened when those who moved the bullion fans acknowledged in broad daylight that they moved bullion fans. And we are even angry that we had the effrontery to ask them questions about why they were carrying the money because they believe that the money is theirs. However, they made it, nobody knows, and that they have a right to spend it anyhow without anybody questioning them. So, these are critical issues we need to deal with. We have constitutional provisions, we have provisions in the Companies and Allied Matters Act, we have provisions in the Electoral Act, we have rules and regulations made by ANA. We are here to review all of them and see to what extent they protect the very key principles of free and credible elections and they are well nuanced to help us do our development and do it very well. So over the next two days, that's what we are going to do. We have a, present, a key presentation which has tried to review the laws. We are going to present them and have several breakout group discussions to get them much more fine-tuned. And at the end of the day, we hope this will be the basis of getting engagements with the legislature in the run-up to the amendment of the Electoral Act 2010 as already amended. So ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, I welcome you to this very important uh, validation meeting and workshop. 
being organized by CSJ with the support of the Frederike Bastille Tong. I will now invite uh, Madam Juliana Nosike from Frederike Bastille Tong to come and give a goodwill message. <laughs> 